Okay, so here is something that should be a little bit sobering uh, even to uh, keg party frat boys. Here's something that should be a little sobering to you today. Uh, most of you people know someone who is in hell right now. Think about that for a minute. Think, no, no, this is not hell. This is UNC Charlotte. I don't know what kind of education they're giving you here today, but uh, you could probably have ice cream within five minutes here. This is not hell. But, but most of you, most of you, if not all of you, know someone who is in hell right now. Why? Because law of averages says so. Jesus said, broad is the road that leads to destruction and many go that way. But narrow is the path and difficult is the way that leads to everlasting life and few there be that find it. Very few. So in Jesus' own words, Jesus' own words tell us that very few will enter into the kingdom of God. So I ask you today, are you on that broad road leading to destruction? Or are you on that narrow path and that difficult way that leads to everlasting life? You need to choose which path to be on. So why do I say that most of you know someone who is in hell right now? Well, by Jesus' own words, most people will end up in hell. And probably by even by your young age, you have probably already seen many, many people die. Maybe you've lost a sweet old nan or papa. Maybe you've had aunts or uncles or other relatives that have died. Maybe you've had co-workers or friends that have died. If you know several people that have died, then law of averages, law of averages says that you know someone who is in hell at this very moment. That should be a sobering thought. And if someone that you know has died and gone off to hell, it is too late for them for all of eternity. So, because if you know several people that have died, Law of Averages says someone you know is in hell right now. What are they doing in hell? Well, Jesus tells us, Jesus gives us just a brief glimpse of what people are doing in hell. Jesus spoke about two men who lived and died, and one, it was Lazarus, a poor beggar who was covered in sores and just begged for scraps outside of the rich man's palace and the dogs came and licked his sores and this man was wretched but apparently as a son of Abraham as a worshiper of God keeping his commandments that man died and also that rich man that rich man who uh, ate sumptuously in his palace and ignored those who were less fortunate and thumbed his nose up at God both men died and this is not presented as a parable that Jesus did not ever use specific people's names in a parable. These were two real people who died about 2,000 years ago in Jesus' time. And when those two men died, Lazarus, the son of Abraham, was in Abraham's bosom in, in paradise. And But that rich man, the Bible says that that rich man was instantly in the torments of hell. Instantly, that man was in the torments of hell. Listen up, Catholics, there is no purgatory. You're not going to get a chance to clean up anything after you die. Purgatory is a lie of the devil. It is appointed once for man to die, and after this, the judgment. These two men went to the only two places there would be, one in paradise and one in hell. And that man in hell, he cried out for two things. So we have a small glimpse into what people in hell are going through. It says instantly he was in the torments of those flames. Now, Bible quiz, can anyone tell me what were the two things that that rich man in hell cried out for? Anyone? No. Anyone? Anyone? 
What were the two things that the rich man in hell cried out for? Anyone? This is about the level of Bible knowledge I would expect. What's that? All right, that was the first. Amen. What's your name? You get a gold star. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Save that one. Stephen has gotten it right. Are you a brother in Christ? No. I, what a condemnation to the Christians on this campus. A non-Christian is the only one who can answer a Bible question. Are you an atheist? Atheists know the Bible better than most professing Christians. I will give you that. Stephen, the atheist, gets a gold star for the day. I think he knows both things that the rich man cried out for. The first, what was it, Stephen? A drop of water. The first thing that that rich man cried out for. He could see uh, Abraham and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried out, Father Abraham, send Lazarus that he might just, just dip his finger in water and touch my tongue, for I am tormented in these flames. The first thing that that man cried out for instantly, instantly, was he wanted just a drop of water on his tongue. Ah, oh, that's good. But here we are, 2,000 years later, and that rich man was denied water then, and he's been denied water for 2,000 years, and he will be denied even a drop of water for all of eternity. But he was still crying out. Now, so if you know someone in hell that has died, they're crying out for just a drop of water at this moment and being denied. Now, here's the more important one. What was the second thing that the rich man cried out for? Stephen. Amen. Amen, folks. Stephen, the atheist, is the student of the day. Stephen, the atheist, has become the student of the day. He knows his Bible. And he's an atheist. What a disgrace to a lot of Christians on this campus. So the first thing was a drop of water on his tongue, denied. And the second thing that he wanted, as Stephen said, was that someone would go and warn his five brothers about that horrible place called hell that they wouldn't go there. Stephen, come on over here a second. I like you. Come on. We need Stephen. Right here, serving right here. Stephen was one of his requests that the rich man that he himself could get out of hell? No. He knew his fate was sealed. That rich man knew his fate was sealed. He didn't cry out, get me out of this horrible place. He knew it was too late for him. But he didn't want his five brothers to share his same fate. Folks, if you know someone that has died, a family member, a friend, a co-worker that has died and they did not know Jesus Christ as their Savior, I'm telling you right now that the Bible says that person is in hell awaiting their final judgment and they are being tormented in the flames and they are being uh, denied just a drop of water and they are begging that someone would go and warn you not to go to that horrible place. There are people in hell right now that probably know you personally that are wishing and begging that someone would go and warn, warn you not to go to that horrible place. So, uh, Sister Angela and I come out here on behalf of those poor wretched souls in hell this moment who know you that they themselves cannot come out and warn you not to go to that place. The, they was denied, uh, that rich man was denied that someone would go and warn him. And he said, they have Moses and the prophets. If they won't listen to them, they wouldn't listen even if someone went to them from the dead. So folks, we come out here today begging you and imploring you on Christ's behalf, speaking as though God were speaking, imploring through us, be reconciled to God through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Do not share the same fate of an unsaved person that you know that has died, who is in hell at this moment, crying out, 
that you would uh, have someone warn you not to go to that place. Be reconciled to God today, folks, before it's too late. What is that process? Let me give you that process. The process of being saved and being made right with God and having the shackles of sin drop from, a, drop from around you is you must humble yourself before God. The Bible says God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Hold on. Gives grace to the humble. Humble yourself before a holy and righteous God. Turn from your sin. Turn from your sin. What's that? What do you want? He's trying to escape right there. I'm a money making machine. Turn from your sin. You better, you better get saved. I recommend, are you saved? Are you a born again Christian? You better get saved real quick, brother, because you could, you, you might. You, he's he's going to be an object lesson. This guy's going to be an object lesson. I'm telling you, get saved fast, boy. Get saved fast, because you smack your head on that. You, you smack your head on that. You're tempting fate. You're tempting fate. The Bible says, let today be the day of salvation. Let today be the day of salvation. Humble yourself before a holy and righteous God. Turn from your sin 180 degrees. Hate what God hates. Love what God loves. Be reconciled unto God. All right.